Hello and good morning and welcome back to Simply Gregster EV. Today we have something that I've been wanting to drive, you've been wanting to see. We got ourselves a Ford Mustang Mach-E Select All-Wheel Drive. We're going to do what we always do. We're going to go over it, we're going to drive it, and we're going to uh, see what we think about it. I'm really excited to get into this. Haven't had a Mach-E yet on the channel, so I think we're going to enjoy this. Stay tuned, let's get into it. But yeah, this is the Mach-E. Uh, I'm still not too sure about the uh, name, but I understand why they uh, did it. It has lots of Mustang styling de design cues on it. I think it looks good. Your charge port is here. Of course, uh, J1772 and CCS. We'll work on Tesla superchargers with the adapter. This is on 18s. This is a fairly base model car. Those are four piston calipers up front. Your door handles are actually a button, typical old school Ford with the code to uh, lock and unlock. Cut a nice uh, slope down in the back. The rear end looks really good on, on this car. I have to say they did a good job styling it. They really went for the uh, styling cues of the Mustang. I understand why they did it. I'm still not sure about the name. Maybe they should have called it just a Mach-E. Plenty of storage space back here. You have your little area with more storage and your charging cables. As I said, this car uh, is used. Again, that's why it's a bit dirty. Also, not another power, no power tailgate on something this expensive. I don't know, that's so weird. We saw that on the VinFast. Again, everything looks good here. We'll get into the back the doors open up automatically plenty of room back here i actually quite like the stitching on uh, these seats plenty of room for uh, people or your children leg room usb-c and usb-a as i said this is select trim so this is sort of on the um, base model this comes in a few trims there's premium and gt actually one of my friends has a, a, a gt he just picked it up Again, back up front here. Dash is really nice. I have to say they did a good job with the interior. A couple squeaks and rattles, but that's to be expected with Ford. It's written Mustang across here. Again, I'm not, I'm not too sure if I like that, but I understand why they did it. Door panel is really nice on it. Really high quality door panel. I love how the doors extend over the sills so you get in and don't really dirty up your, your pants or scratch the sills with your shoes or pants. The door release, simple simple almost looking toggle switch there again really nice in here everything seems to be really good not too sure about this color though i don't think i'd get one in this color nice door release sorry a nice door handle here to open it weird that the rears are powered that the rears are powered but the fronts have a handle that's strange maybe uh someone from ford can chime in still on winter tires unfortunately but no, all is good here. We'll come back around to the front. And something I do like, and I don't show often enough on these re reviews, is are, th are the frunks. This does have a pretty good sized frunk. Pretty good sized frunk, lots of room in here. Not as big as a Model Y though, but uh, close enough actually. Make sure that's closed, which it isn't. There we go. Everything, all these hoods are so light now, you really have to slam them down. I don't like doing that. Again, back to door panel, driver's side door panel, really good. This car is about 30,000 kilometers on it. Interior is holding up well. Seat seems to be holding up well. Again, I quite like these seats. Let's just get inside here.
that's going to be an eco mode and this is going to be i guess um, some sort of mid mode very cool i actually quite like this screen layout i think it's pretty cool i don't like um, overly complex screens but this one's so far easy to use you have your driver assist which by the way ford blue cruise works absolutely fantastic it was really good i tried it yesterday coming back um on 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 the highway auto lane change worked seamlessly the hands-free steering worked great i'm really really impressed it was really really good the uh, blue cruise again the, these are your vehicle settings it's a it's a bit slow there's a lot to go through here we're not going to go through all of it i'm not going to uh, bother with that but yeah, very nice in here. I like it. Uh, down here you have your uh, phone oven, as I call it. I got an overheat warning on my iPhone 15 Pro Max. I don't know why the other manufacturers don't, um, or all manufacturers just don't uh, chill this. As I mentioned, this is available in several trim options. You have select rear wheel drive, select all wheel drive, premium, and GT. As I said before, one of my friends has a GT. We should really get that on the channel to drive it. I think he'd be really cool to have on the channel and he'd be cool with having it on the channel. So this one here, uh, select all wheel drive, 70 kilowatt hour battery pack, I wanna say, about 280 horsepower output, about 400 kilometers of range. Finding numbers on this was very difficult because they're all over the place. There's so many different trim levels, battery options. They have a standard range like this one. They have an extended range with, I believe, a 90 kilowatt hour battery in it. Uh, yeah, they're kind of all over the place. It was really, really hard to find any information for this. Not even the owner really 100% knew what he had. They had so many variations and model and trim levels. And I think that's a big problem for a company like Ford. Why they keep losing so much money on the, um, on the EV side is that they just offer way too many trim levels and options. Have one or two trim levels. Have, have a good base model. Maybe a rear drive and some sport model. But this like select premium ultra premium gt crazy spec gt whatever 500 shelby like do you really need all these different models i mean no tesla has three model y's they have rear rear drive long range dual motor and they have a performance they have three with very little options between the two of them you don't need 20 different choices of vehicle within the same range i don't know why they do that so let's get back in we'll uh we'll, we'll go for a drive and uh, we'll see what's what so far what's it like to drive you know what it's not too bad it's like all these ev suvs the suspension is so stiff on them and now the tire pressures are bumped up so high i think it's like 46 pounds of air in the tires and cities are falling apart all over here in north america as we know it's a bit bone jarring i have to admit the ride is not great in this maybe in other trim levels it rides better but in this it's pretty, it's pretty bone jarring but as i said in that vinfast video this is how all manufacturers seem to be going now extremely stiff suspension that's under dampened so all you're doing is you're flopping around and the damper can't keep up with the spring that's that's my opinion i'm probably wrong those um the suspension tuning guys the chassis guys at these manufacturers they're all engineers with years of experience but it's just too stiff like you may have to really work on this it's absolutely i wouldn't say it's appalling in here but you know it's kind of like riding in a pickup truck that has no weight in it it it, it has that feeling handling is pretty good i mean it 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 handles let's say it definitely handles um it's quite engaging i quite like it at first i didn't like it yesterday but you know what it's pretty good it's pretty good it's not look it's not a sports car but you're in a close to 5,000 pound SUV. There's only so much you can do with it at the end of the day in terms of body control without getting into uh, complex air suspension systems and hydraulic anti-roll bars and all of it. Peak charge rate on this one, as I said, this is a select all wheel drive, six, uh, sorry, 70 kilowatt hour battery pack, give or take. It's around 115, 120 kilowatts peak. Ford says uh, 10 to 80% in around half an hour. That's sort of industry average these days, to be honest with you, with a vehicle like this. If the 90 kilowatt hour pack, the extended range will go up to 150 kilowatts. 
onboard uh, charger AC is, is 11 kilowatts, so no issues charging at home if you have a 11 kilowatt setup. And the reason why, from my understanding, why Ford limited charge rates on this on uh, DC fast chargers had to do with either they undersized the cabling or undersized the connectors on, on the cabling, which is a bit strange because that's maybe not the best area where you want to be cheaping out on um, critical components like that. Uh, is on your charging, but they have their own reasons for doing it. I'm not sure what they are. This is just what I've read and I'm not 100% sure if this has that overboost charging function as the F-150 Lightning does and I know I have for to a fact say that I'm very impressed with the Ford Mustang Mach-E. I might not like the name, I but I understand why they call it a Mustang. They had to branch out to an existing client base but I think I would have just called it a, a Mach-E at the end of the day. It's extremely smooth, extremely quiet to uh, drive. Uh, I'm sorry that the sun is in your face, it's extremely bright. Extremely smooth, extremely quiet to uh, drive. No throttle lag, no motor engagement um, lag like we saw with, with that VinFast. I think it looks great. This is a very compelling product. I really think Ford, for their first serious EV attempt, really hit the ball out of the park. Uh, some of you will mention, hey, Greg, you didn't talk about any performance numbers, 0 to 100, 0 to 60. You know what? They're kind of getting pointless, the, those numbers. Back in the day of Rolls-Royce, they would always say that power was adequate or acceleration was adequate. And you know what? It's becoming like this with EVs. These crazy 0 to 100, 0 to 60 times in real life, they don't really matter all, all that much. Uh, so that's why I think I'm going to... There's no point mentioning them anymore. This is extremely quick. I'll just mention it here. I believe it's around zero to 100 in six and a half seconds, 6.6, .6, something like that. Uh, very compelling product. I'm very impressed with it. Couple problems. Maybe the build quality is not quite there. It still feels a bit forward on terms of that. But for their first attempt at making a serious EV, this is absolutely fa fantastic. This is why I've always had a soft spot for the um, Mach-E. Maybe not my color choice. Um, I maybe would go for a slightly higher trim line, but you know what? This is a great product. This is one of those products that might only come around every 20 years when a manufacturer hits it this well out of the park. Absolutely fantastic. I'm very impressed with it. If you're not looking for a Model Y and you want something a bit more familiar from a familiar brand, definitely go for one. Definitely go for one because I think I would. And if you made it this far in the video, please, thinking, please think about liking and uh, subscribing. And uh, we'll see you again in the, in the next film.